Hi, everyone. For those who are not acquainted with me yet, I am the head of marketing department here at Gurtem, and together with Ivan Sobolev, our digital marketing expert, <laughs> we will deliver a training session uh, on the ways how to ensure the constant uh, customers flow using the most widespread instruments of the online marketing. Uh, and uh, relax, you can do it even without having a dedicated marketing specialist in-house. So to start with, I would like to ask you, what kind of marketing channels do you usually use? I mean, from the online marketing. There are some examples for your reference. Is there anyone using the website? Mr. Samir, yeah? See some people, maybe content marketing or having a blog? No. Social media? Mr. Samir again. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, I am sure that after this presentation, you will start to use everything from the list. Or maybe not everything, maybe only these three channels that we are speaking today. So it's the website, it's email marketing, and social media. And my colleague Ivan will continue uh, with the talk about the website. Thank you, Anastasia. So uh, it's a common knowledge today that to succeed, uh, each company need to have a website. But not even a website, a website that is optimized in terms of getting in uh, search results. So uh, my topic is a selling website. We're going to talk uh, a little bit about the uh, structure of your website and about analytics. So. Uh, uh, now we are receiving uh, more and more uh, CEO audits requests from our partners and for the last three months we've received uh, three times more uh, CEO audits requests uh, than for the entire last year. So um, our partners uh, understand that uh, you uh, need uh, not only working website but uh, the website that has a user-friendly and well-structured content and is uh, optimized for search engines. So let's talk about it in more detail and we're going to start with the basic uh, structure audit. So the first uh, question that we are going to answer is, uh, is your website well structured? Um, during my report, I will show you some examples. Uh, these examples are from uh, our beloved partners and uh, some are from our competitors. So uh, for example, what product does that website sell? It's something about effective, uh, okay. Uh, basically, I don't understand. Maybe you. Okay, uh, uh, these guys provide uh, fuel uh, control solution. So, um, and here we're talking about usability or user experience. Uh, usability is the art of making your website firstly simple, user-friendly, easy to use. Uh, because uh, uh, you must understand your customer's online behavior and uh, it uh, gives you an insight into what works on your web website and what doesn't work. So um, there are a few questions uh, that you can uh, ask to yourself uh, about your website usability. First one, uh, do links and buttons on your website appear clickable as they should? Uh, the second one is, does the website flow logically? It means, uh, is it understandable to your uh, potential customer how to uh, travel from uh, one page to another? Uh, the other question is, is it clear where important information can be found? Uh, if uh, you cannot answer those questions, your website is not designed for usability. Uh, here's an example of well-structured website. It's from our partner SafriTrack. Uh, so you can see uh, on the first page that you can uh, see how a uh, platform works. Uh, you can request a quote, uh, uh, find some information about company, uh, find uh, login link and support link. So uh, it's a very uh, good example. Um, the next question that we are going to answer is, does the page provide relevant and user-friendly answer? Uh, th uh, th uh, that example is from our partners, Iceline. Uh, uh, these are guys from India. Um, so uh, as you can see, icons are big. Uh, their um, headings are big enough to read. And if you click on these um, items, you are uh, redirected to the related page. So great job, 
It's a great website and it's a great example. Uh, uh, the next uh, step uh, that we're going to discuss uh, and uh, uh, the next question is, is the navigation through the pages clear? So uh, it is uh, very crucial in um, your website structure. There was a research when uh, people uh, were asked the following question. What determines website usability? And 75% uh, of uh, respondent, uh, respondents stated that ease of finding the information is crucial for the website. So uh, it's a very huge number and uh, you can keep it in mind. Uh, there are a few tips uh, for uh, the navigation uh, to, uh, that can help you to improve navigation on your website. So, uh, for example, you can use breadcrumbs. Uh, they are basically on-page uh, navigation elements, so um, the customer easily can uh, determine on what page uh, he is now. Uh, uh, he can um, travel back to the previous page, to the main page, etc. Uh, the next tip is avoiding the dead ends at the end of the page. Maybe uh, you recognize that website. Yes, someone recognizes? Guys, it's <laughs> Gurten block. So uh, we are avoiding dead ends <laughs> at our block. Um, so uh, you must initiate the user to view related content uh, uh, that he is displaying now. Uh, you can link uh, uh, links that lead to the main page, the next or the previous one. So. Uh, the next uh, question that we are going to answer is, does the website look good on mobile devices? So there are a few examples. Uh, this is a website from our partner AlbaSmart. Uh, so um, it is mobile view. Uh, you can see that buttons are big, uh, icons are big enough, uh, texts are readable, uh, images are resized to the mobile device that we, uh, that we are displaying. The page and uh, on another side, website of uh, some company. So um, uh, imagine that you are using your uh, tablet or your phone. You open the page and what do you see? Nothing. <laughs> so you can treat text properly. Uh, images are not even resized. Uh, uh, buttons are not even visible. So uh, that website is not optimized for mobile devices uh, at all. One second. Uh, in our ordinary life, uh, it seems to mean nothing. But in terms of uh, website uh, speed time or website load time, uh, every second counts. So uh, every one second delay in page load uh, decreases customer satisfaction by 16%, uh, page views by 11%, and uh, conversion rates by 7%. So pay close attention to the uh, page load speed. Uh, uh, now uh, let's talk a little bit about what should a mobile friendly website contain. Uh, firstly, site uh, must be displayed properly or correctly on any device. Uh, it can be a tablet or a smartphone or a desktop device. Uh, your website uh, must display properly. Uh, readable fonts. You can use standard fonts, uh, fonts uh, so people can easily read uh, the contents of your uh, web pages. Uh, proper text formatting, it's about using headlines, uh, um, lists, uh, where it makes sense to include them. Uh, and media uh, displays correctly on any device, so uh, your potential customer uh, don't need to resize uh, something on your page to view the contents. Uh, you can check your website mobile optimization using those services. Uh, by the way, um, our presentation uh, would be available at my.gurtan.com, so you can follow those links and check your website for mobile optimization. Uh, now we are going to talk uh, about analyzing, uh, analyzing your website traffic. Uh, please raise your hands if you use uh, Google Analytics on your website. Somebody, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. Uh, if not, I highly recommend you to uh, set up 
it is, uh, it is pretty easy. So uh, you are following three easy steps and uh, you are ready to go. So Google Analytics is a software that helps you to track uh, uh, all the traffic that goes to your website uh, and I it, is, uh, it contains some number of uh, reports that can help you uh, in your um, digital ma marketing strat strategy. Uh, when you start collecting your data, uh, uh, the first report that you are going to see is audience report. So uh, audience repo reports uh, helps you to learn everything about uh, the overall amount of sessions, uh, users, uh, bounce rates, and average previews per session. So common use cases are uh, if you want to analyze uh, all the big amount of sessions and users, um, if you want to analyze effectiveness of your pages and texts and bounce rates, for example, uh, you have a new text uh, or you have a blog um, uh, and uh, you want to analyze if it is interesting to your potential customer. Um, and analyze average pay views per session. Uh, it means um, how much pages uh, does your potential customer visit uh, before uh, he exits the page. Um, also, audience reports uh, contain uh, uh, some kind of geo reports. So, for example, you can find out uh, how much people from, uh, hmm, for example, California or New York are using your website or are visiting your website. Um, it is pretty uh, informational report. So, uh, common use cases for geo reports are uh, if you want to know more about the most traffic driving countries and regions for your website. Um, and if you want to learn more about the most effective time for posting in social media for different reg regions. So for example, uh, you uh, post um, a post in Facebook, for example, uh, and it links to your website. Uh, and for example, you work in different regions, uh, what, uh, New York or California, and uh, you want to find out uh, for what region uh, this post in Facebook was more effective. So uh, if you want to find out, uh, you can uh, use geo reports. Acquisition reports. Uh, acquisition reports, uh, it helps you to learn everything about your traffic from different search engines, uh, social networks, advertising systems, referrals, and etc. Uh, the most common use cases are uh, analyzing the most effective channels for your website. For example, you're using Google Ads, uh, for example, you're using SEO on your website or using social media marketing and uh, you want to find out uh, what channel is most uh, effective for your website. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, if you want to find out the most effective search engines uh, and website with links to your website and social medias. Uh, Behavior reports. So behavior reports uh, shows you uh, the top pages on your website, uh, the top entry pages, and the top exit pages of your website. So basically, it's how people travel uh, travel through your pages uh, of your website. What is the starting page and what is the exit page? Uh, use cases are uh, analyzing how people travel through the pages. Uh, as I said. Um, uh, anal uh, when you want to analyze quality of the content on the pages, uh, you can analyze uh, using audience reports and you can analyze uh, using behavior reports. So if you see that um, your customer leaves your website after visiting a certain page uh, and uh, this percent is uh, very high, um, uh, you can uh, change something and, uh, about, uh, and do something about the quality of uh, that page. Um, the another powerful tool, uh, except Google Analytics, analytics is uh, Google Webmaster Tools or Search Console. So uh, it basically helps you to identify issues with your site and can even let you know if it has been infected. So uh, primarily uh, it is an instrument for a digital marketing specialist, but you can uh, use it as an analytics platform. So uh, Google Master Tools contains uh, uh, some amount of reports and uh, we are mm, going to uh, quickly uh, go through uh, basic basics. 
So uh, the first report is search queries reports. Uh, here you can get an overview of the top keywords that return a page from your site in the search results. Uh, for example, if uh, someone is uh, Googling your website uh, in search queries report, uh, you will see uh, what was the exact phrase. Uh, also, you can find uh, the total amount of clicks, total amount of impressions, uh, uh, C uh, CTR uh, and average position of your website uh, based on the certain keyword that you are uh, tracking. Uh, the Citer's uh, report uh, um, is very useful uh, when, the, uh, when Google uh, detects uh, uh, something like uh, uh, not existing pages on your website and its reports contains uh, uh, 90 days um, history of uh, uh, such uh, errors. Uh, sitemaps report, uh, uh, it is basically about uh, XML sitemap. Uh, it is basically a map of your website, uh, at least in XML format. So uh, uh, you need sitemap if you have a large website uh, or one with a lot of content. If you have a new website and want it to appear in uh, Google search results, or one which uses rich media content. Uh, another report is a blocked URLs report. Um, it is about robots.txt file. Uh, robots.txt file helps you to uh, block some pages uh, or some uh, files from uh, Google crawling. Uh, so they don't appear in search results. Um, some common use cases for uh, robots.txt is preventing duplicate con content from appearing in Google, um, keeping entire sec sections of a website private, for example, uh, some admin pages or some files that you uh, don't want to show in search results, um, and keeping internal search results pages from showing up on the public search engine results pages. So. And uh, in robots.txt file, you can specify the location of sitemap or sitemaps if your website is very large. Uh, and the last uh, report is uh, security issues. So if Google detects any problem or any malware uh, or other security issue on your site, uh, this is where they'll list it out. So um, there will be a suggestions on how to solve it and um, uh, this, this kind of report uh, may be a, a common port of call uh, for your website and for your website analytics. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, you can find me during the conference. Uh, we can have a talk. And now I'm passing the word back to Anastasia. Yes, thank you very much, Ivan. That was a very nice introduction. So basically now we know everything about how to do an audit or if it was too complicated, we can ask Ivan. And you know a little bit of analytics. But the next thing I would like to discuss with you is that we are selling services. And if we think about service versus product, it's super different and it's super more difficult to sell it. What do I mean by this? So services are really complex. Uh, and the value for the client, it's not obvious because they pay first and then they get the service. So what shall we do at our website uh, to make them believe in us? We need to prove that we're an expert because the website is the first thing they see. How can we, imp uh, how can we prove that we're an expert? Definitely we need to work with the structure and with the content. Furthermore, services are intangible and the quality can change from time to time. Imagine the situation. You have a world-class barber. You have a world-class guy that can make you a perfect haircut. So you're super satisfied with him, but one day you come to him and he makes an awful haircut just because his wife left him in the morning and he is very much upset. Yeah, as you see, services, uh, the quality of services can change from time to time. That is why we need to share credibility on the website. And there are four basic steps for this. So let's have a deep dive into all this. Let's start with the structure. So what should definitely be in the structure of your website? Firstly, a clearly marked preposition. So basically, what are you selling? By the way, that's the example of Baltic car equipment. And from the first glance, you need like two seconds to understand that they're selling hardware. They have the software. Of course, it's Vialon. 
uh, and they have some other IT projects, so it's pretty much clear. The second one is the well-organized description of the product. Again, you need two seconds or maybe three to understand what is the basic solution for school bus monitoring. So what devices are here, what kind of people are there. It's very uh, easy to understand because it's done in the scheme. Or this one. Are there anyone who can speak Russian except me? Oh, come on, guys, don't be shy. I know there are some guys from Gurtam. Anyway, if you can't speak uh, Russian, that's a quiz for you. What's going on here? Is anyone who can explain? Okay. Huh? IoT. GPS tracking. Yes, you see, you don't know Russian, but you understand everything correctly. Yes, we have the car, the sensors, and the satellite. Uh, so basically, even without knowing Russian language, you can understand what's going on. Because information is structured, it's a scheme, and uh, it's easy to understand. Yes, yeah, scheme is a very good idea. Imagine we write everything of this in text. It will be the size like this. Here you can uh, easily understand what's going on. Uh, the, th the third thing that should be in the structure is the advantages and the benefits uh, you offer uh, in the very digestible format. So once again, imagine it's a plain text, so there will be a plenty of this. And it's structured perfectly. So it's the heading, the subheading, and three points. Moving next, uh, another thing, oh my god, what happened? Misha, could you please help me? So I was talking about the advantages. But I need an example to show you, because as you know, picture was 100 of words, and that's definitely the, the example I will show you, because here are the numbers. Now you can probably click any and I will click myself. Okay, okay, we're moving, 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 moving. Ba, 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 we are almost here. Yes, it's here. So the advantages in digestible format, in numbers. Also a very nice example. Uh, a request on every page. Uh, just have a look at this website. Uh, basically, it's one of our partners' website. Uh, from Arab Emirates, it's very nice because it has a catchy headline. So yes, I'm interested in waste management. The overview, so what is this about? Okay, I'm still interested in key features with the numbers. Very nice. I can also see the breadcrumbs, so what are the projects, where I am? Here I'm at waste management, very nice. Okay, I want to order it, but how can I do this? There is no request form, so it should be here where the uh, red square is. And it's definitely missed here. Yeah, the copyright can be quite uh, creative, so you can use this example or any else, but you need to test it, of course. What else is the contact information? So it should be easily cached with an eye. Yeah, it's here, you see it's highlighted. It's also our partner's website, a really nice one. Uh, by the way, you will get this information at my.gurtum.com, and you have the links to all the examples, so you can check them. The information about the company, again, again, it's the Gurtum website, because I really think it's a nice one. So we put everything we like. We like links, the number of people, uh, the number of countries and the partners. So uh, our values, that everything that should convince people that we are experts. Multimedia materials. Uh, so this can be a download link, or for example, the total description of the solution with the download of the brochure, or this nice example, you can watch the videos and download the app. Basically, that's the example from Sri Lanka. So we have worked with the structure, and uh, now we know how to show uh, us as an expert. But what's next? We need to show credibility. So, and here are four steps to do this. Formal elements, technical elements, social proof, and of course, everything outside the website. So, uh, formal elements, what is this? Of course, these are the certificates and licenses you have. Just have a look at this example. Our partner from Emirates work with Dubai Police or with the um, uh, Department of Economic Development, and of course they put this information in a very visible place on their website. Uh, 
or for, exam for example, the official ratings. As you know, in some two days, we will have uh, the award ceremony for the VLON top 50 partners. So if you got the uh, trophy, you can also put it on the website. Also well-known partners and clients. Uh, and information about certifications, like for example, ISO 1. Uh, the technical thing is, of course, the safe connection. It means that you care about the customers. Uh, the second one is the links uh, to the applications you have. So basically, if you have enough strong and power and resources to develop the application, please do not hide the links. Please do not hide these buttons. Make them big and uh, visible because that's the element of credibility. Also, multi-language websites are also known as credible. Uh, good up-to-date design. Yes, it goes without saying. Uh, the systems of error notification. I don't know if you have seen it, but it's the system when you highlight the part of the text, press enter and control, uh, and there is a pop-up where you can report the mistake. So basically, if you found a mistake on the website, you can report it, and the owner of the website will see it. So this shows that you really care about the impression you make. The mobile version and the adaptive layout. Uh, I think that Ivan spent for three minutes of his 10 minute speech uh, regarding the mobile version, so yes, it's really important. Uh, and of course, the social proof. So it's your social connections, and it's the thing that is uh, widely used uh, among our partner community. So these are the reviews and testimonials. It's the list of the clients. If you see, for example, the DHL, so you will definitely think that it's the credible partner. It's the branches. Uh, of course, if you have different offices, you are seen as a credible partner. Even if there is one person in the office, nobody cares. Um, also, the careers. Uh, it's also very nice uh, because um, the visitors of the website see that you are developing, so you are opening new positions, and of course, it increases the credibility. And the social proof. One more. Information about the employees and their qualification. Awards and cost constant victory contest, sorry, victories, uh, and also the votings, because votings show that you really care uh, about what your customer thinks. And one more, and I think the most interesting one is the cases. So it's the real examples when you help the customer. Look at this example, it's the one from Germany, from our partner, so there is a brief overview and the video, it's less than two minutes. Uh, and the partner told me that um, to film three videos like this, he spent 2.5 thousand of euros. So maybe the reasonable price because he can use this video for ages. And the first one is the things outside the website. So um, it's the information you put on the forums, on the, um, for example, professional social communities on LinkedIn. It's the reviews. So, and the way how you work with the reviews, for example, if someone is uh, writing a web, uh, review about you on Captera, even if it's the bad one. So, uh, you need to react, you need to respond, you need to um, talk with the person. And also the forums. Oh, I again spoiled everything. Sorry for this. Good to have an IT guy who can fix everything. I can fix only the website, or at least tell you how to fix it. Uh, yes, and here is the checklist with the hints. How can you do the fast improvement to your website? So the first one is to add the dynamic elements. Uh, again, it's example from Germany. So it's the video, I just told you that the guys filmed three videos. Um, so they put them on the website uh, at the first screen, so it's dynamic, it attracts the attention, and I will tell you about the attracting the attention a bit later, so it really works. The next one is the chatter. So it's um, basically a plugin you put inside uh, the website. There is an example of which one you can take. So um, that's about using the more and more channels where you can find your leads, where you can find your future clients. The analytics, Ivan already told you. Uh, the lead generation tools, like for example this one, uh, it's in German but it's written like, have you already read our brochure? So you can leave your email uh, or if you want the phone and get the brochure. Iframe with the number of units in Violon. So you show that the website is uh, live. 
and you also show the credibility, the news. You're also showing the dynamics and sharing the insights. Question and answers block. So this one is from Flaspy website. You're also showing the credibility and the good hints that this question and answers block are very good for search engine optimization. So definitely use one. And that's another example from Netherlands and the contacts. So the bottom line of this part is that the website is the essential part of the promotion of their services. Uh, the website should provide the relevant response to the, uh, your future client's questions, be well structured and has a clear navigation. So please work with the structure and the content if you want to prove yourself to be an expert and work the with the credibility elements that will make uh, the visitors of your website believe in you. And last but not least, that analytics, dynamic elements, chatters, question and answers, block, blocks, uh, news and contacts uh, will improve your website rather fast and rather easy. So let's move the, to the email marketing. Uh, nowadays, email marketing has changed much. So uh, even if we are using the automated services, we can uh, easily segment the clients, we can change the headlines, we can uh, do the A-B splits, so it's not spammy anymore, because in uh, every email you can get the big, big unsubscribe link. Uh, basically, we're using this monkey, so it's the MailChimp one. I if you don't like monkeys, of course, there is a link uh, with the good MailChimp alternatives. Basically, it's the mailing system, and I really ad advise you to use one. Now you'll understand why. Uh, but the question uh, that remains is what are the topics to cover in the emails, yes? So um, what are the ideas to share? Uh, basically, uh, I've checked, like, I don't know how many, but really many uh, emails of our partners and their newsletters. So these are the main topics they usually cover. So is the special offers, is the useful content. So it's like educational materials, videos. It's like their life hacks and their insights, the pieces of advice they share. It's the um, information about the events they organize or participate in. By the way, we will have a training on organizing the events later today. Uh, company news and updates, and of course, seasonal greetings. So, what about creating a letter? Let's go through the process. Basically, it's only four steps. The first one is analyzing the current situation, so finding out the problems and dealing with them. Then creating a letter, then sending it correctly and then analyzing. So let's go into details. Analyzing the current situation. If you have a mailing system, okay, that's easy because you will have all the analytics in hand. If no, you need to ask yourself like a dozen of questions. For example, what was done before? What were the emails sent? Who were the uh, recipients? What kind of letters we sent? What really worked? What were the aims? Like a lot of them, thanks God you will have this presentation and can come back and read them once again. Uh, when you have the answers to, to these questions, you can identify the problem. Say the problem is, uh, I have little calls from my emails. So what can be the reasons for this? For example, the low season. Say you sent your email campaign at 24th of December, nobody cares. Say uh, the base of, uh, that you've sent the email to isn't active. So um, with this, I mean that you take the emails you have from your previous job 10 years ago and send to it, no, it won't work. Or you take the emails like info at blah, blah, blah dot com, it won't work either. Or you have the poor segmentation. Say you took uh, your clients from region A and the clients from region B and sent the bulk email or you took the clients from big companies and like super huge companies and sent the bulk email, so it won't work. Or for example, the percentage of letter deliverers is really low, so people uh, marked your emails previously as spam, for example. So um, when you know what's the problem and you have identified the reasons, um, you still have something to consider. First, the quality of emails b email base you have so their open rate and conversion. It means that do people you target respond or click to your emails uh, in, or maybe call instead. So what, are the, what is their behavior? Uh, then you need to segment your email base. 
By segmenting, I mean that you need to divide your email, email base into homogeneous parts, so the parts that will be different from each other, but the same inside. So you take one characteristic that is really important for you, for example, the geographical one, or for example, leads versus current clients, or for example, uh, the sphere they work in, or maybe the amount of people they have, so the, uh, uh, mm, the volume and the um, scale of the company. So uh, you need to divide all the base to these homogeneous uh, sectors. The next one um, is to think how does your base react. So what is the best time of the sending? What's the best frequency? Um, how should the offer look like? So we will also uh, devote some two, three minutes on this a little bit later. Um, now let's go to the email itself. Has anyone ever heard about these strange four letters? A, I, D, A, yeah, perfect. So maybe you will tell us what is this? Yes, exactly. So uh, it's basically, uh, absolutely, it's the sales process or the communication process. So these are, uh, these letters stand for A, attention, I, interest, uh, and I have the picture, yeah, it's better. Mm -hmm. uh, attention, interest, desire, and action. Uh, and sometimes desire and action are merged together. So, um, of course, from sales prospects is the um, way you sell. But from my marketing point of view, is the way of communication. So first you need to grab the attention, then you need to arouse the interest, and then you make, uh, to, uh, you make, um, you make uh, people to do what you want. So uh, basically, it's the very common theory, and uh, it can be um, implemented in any sphere of life. Uh, but now I would like to implement it to the email. So uh, as you know, email have different uh, parts of the structure. Like, for example, the name of the sender, the, head, the header or pre-header, so this is the attention part. Uh, the header and the body, so it's the interest part. And desire to act is the buttons like this. I'm sure you have seen them before. Or the special phrases in the content. So how it looks in reality. Oh, what's an animation? Very nice. Uh, name and the email of the sender is the attention part. So, uh, yeah, it looks like this. I'm sure you have seen it <laughs> for one million of times. So the bad one is this, like, no reply at blah, 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 dot com. Uh, it's the standard one that is proposed f by the mailing system, but it's, not, uh, it's a bad one. What is good, if you want to do non-personal one, it's welcome at, hello at, or support at. So um, these are more credible ones. But the one I would recommend is the personal one, of course, is the best. And the example here is um, IoT now is basically the guys doing news and news digest. So for them, it's okay. But I think it will be much better if they put the name of their editor in chief here. Yes, because I know him uh, and I will definitely uh, click on the email. Yeah, you can also use the favicon, a small picture here if you want, but it's not obligatory. The topic or the heading line, it should be personalized. So uh, it should answer the questions, what is this, for whom, when, and how? Yes, I know, it's difficult to put every, every answer to the one small line, but you should try, because uh, if I see um, the topic line that tells me what's going on, why it is for me, and that it's time limited, I will definitely click. And you? Hope to. So make it brief. Uh, 60 characteristics is the maximum because remember that someone will uh, read your email on the big, big screen sitting in the office and someone will scroll with his or her iPhone, so it should be uh, brief. The, connect uh, the connection with time and urgency, so it should be limited. If it's an offer, it should be limited in time. Uh, the uniqueness, so you should explain that it's only for the subscribers or it's only for you. Uh, it's your advantage. Uh, and also you can use the special characters if you want. Uh, so it can be stars, diamonds, or whatever. By the way, we have tested a lot of this. Uh, and for example, for Middle East region, the diamonds look the better. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> sometimes we put the diamonds into the heading line when we're doing the messages to the Middle East partners. Uh, and please do not use N words, which are not, uh, nobody, nothing. And no full stops. Uh, also, question jokes are also welcomed if you know how to do this, but it's the tricky one. 
the pre-header. Don't be afraid of the words, I'm afraid too. Uh, but see, what is this? Uh, basically, you usually use the header, so it's um, the topic of the letter. But this one, the next uh, line, is also uh, displayed with, for example, Gmail. So here, it's basically a very nice one because it's um, the industry market and IoT, challenges and opportunities. It's okay, but they also use uh, the pre-header. So in this report, complied by a strategy analyst, you can find a clear-headed view of the opportunity presented by industrial IoT. So that's very nice, and they almost double the heading. The header or post header, so please uh, put there the unsubscribe link, as I already told you. You can also put the logo and the motto, uh, and some popular, for example, if you're doing the special offer about, say, trackers, you can put the popular section. So these are the most popular trackers that other of your customers use. Buddy, that's your turn. I believe you're an expert better than me. But what I would suggest is to use this Hemingway app. It's actually a very nice one if you use the English language because it will uh, highlight all the spelling mistakes and it will propose how to make your text sharper. And the footer, that's definitely the example from Gurtam email campaign. I'm sorry for this, but I really love them. So it's the social media, uh, it's the copyright, uh, and it's the explanation why do we got this email. So it's uh, because you are subscribed to Gurtum News. Um, it's the link how to add this email address to the address book, uh, so it never will got to spam anymore. And there is an unsubscribe link. So you can also use the copyright. So please also make sure that you utilize the footer. And now desire to act. So that's the last one. You remember the inverted permit, this one. So it's the red and the most important, because people usually forget about this. So make call to action easy to notice. For example, this one. And this is the, um, uh, this is the call to action. So it's really contrast. You can easily notice it. But uh, do not write them in a very selling way. So it's more about getting information. For example, learn more, learn now, or get more information. So they, they are not so direct, they're not about selling. Uh, offer something now, at the very moment, so it should be limited in time. And of course, avoid the long phrases. So the shorter it is, the better it will work. And there are also some hints and tricks uh, about the emails. So, so the whites of the content area should be not more than 600 of pixels yet. That's because someone used the mobile phone, someone used the big screen. Uh, please use blocks um, to make your design adaptive. It's basically the continuation of the first point. Make text text. And by this, I mean, uh, I know that uh, some of you have the designers and there is also a possibility to make the picture very nice and to use different fonts and colors so to make the email attractive and then to put the picture inside so it looks really nice. Um, until the people that got your email had bad internet connection and it won't download at all. Mm -hmm. So he will get the blank email. Nobody wants to be in this situation. Uh, so please use standard fonts uh, and adapt uh, images for the big displays. So basically we're at the second step. We have analyzed the current situation, we have created a letter, so now we need to send it correctly. And now that's my question. How do you think, what is the best day and the best time to send an email? Alexander, what do you think? Right now, right now. okay, any other options? Yeah. Sunday? Sunday? In Middle East, okay, that's a good point. What about Sri Lanka, how do you think? Monday, Monday okay. <laughs> so, actually that was uh, my question too, because we are selling like tons of emails. That's why I've learned like one million studies. They all were done by super credible people and nice scientists, but the thing that they were all controversial. So some of them told that it's Monday evening, some of them told that it's Sunday morning, whatever. So they were super controversial. That's, m that's uh, because my answer is test, test, and test. Uh, for this email, but I know that everyone likes uh, the easy solutions. So uh, for this uh, presentation, we have um, analyzed two years of our news digest. Uh, and uh, to understand what kind of emails and in which time and in which um, day of the week uh, were the most opened and clicked. 
So I would like to share the results with you. So once again, it's the News Digest. So for Russia, it was Thursday after lunch, just after lunch. For Europe, it's Friday uh, morning. For the Middle East, it's Sunday, almost like Alexander told us, uh, and Tuesday in the morning. And in Latin America, it was Monday morning. So that's once again the proof of my concept that you need test, test, and test for yourself. Okay, so what do you need to do before pressing send? You need firstly to check that uh, the segment of the recipient is correct. You check the date and the time. You check whether the content is relevant. You check whether the topic is appealing, uh, whether the layout is done correctly and the design is adaptive. Uh, and you have the alt text to the pictures is the situation uh, when, for example, the internet connection is slow, but th uh, the email shows text uh, in addition to the picture. So you will never get the blank email. Uh, the next step is that to be sure that the, re the recipient knows the from name and the from email, that all li links head to correct pages. You have the unsubscribe link uh, and the information on the website you had people to is relevant. And the last but very important uh, is that you are ready to the traffic and calls. Because one of the partners on the previous conference told me uh, like super funny story, but he was not amazed at all. Uh, he was thinking about the promotional offer. So they were thinking for two weeks, arguing uh, very much time um, in, inside the company. So finally they got the offer. It was super nice, like everyone was satisfied with it. They designed a very nice email and sent it, but they were too busy to understood that it was Friday evening. So they got a lot of calls but nobody was in the office. So there were not just uh, there were not just enough people, you know, to respond to the calls. So please make sure that you're ready for the traffic. And the last but not the least step is analyzing the results. So collect the indicators, analyze, and use the learnings. Uh, we track the open rate. So um, according to our experience, uh, the open rate 30% is like super good for our um, partners. We also track the bounce rate and the number of un unsubscribed people. And the thing that really amazed me that we have uh, 12,000, uh, for example, uh, of subscribers. And from one letter, we can have one or two people unsubscribed. So it's like super minimal percentage. And the last thing I would like to tell you is social media. Uh, of course, from the social media, you will never have uh, the direct sales, but definitely they will help you to increase your reach to get more leads, to spread your word, and to generate more traffic to your company blog or to your website. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's the picture from Mr. Samir's company. And I really enjoy how they deal with Facebook. Uh, only one third of our top 50 partners use social media, and in my opinion, it's rather low um, index. That's the distribution. Uh, from this amount, like one third use Facebook and LinkedIn, 19% use Twitter, and almost 10% use Instagram. So what are the topics covered usually by our partners? So these are the new products and solutions, the new devices they have, the cases with number or any other measurable results. I've already told you that it's like super important. Photos from the events organized by the company or just visited by it. And by the way, we'll have the seminar about the organizing the events. Uh, life of the company, so it's introduction of the team. It's again the story about the credibility. Holiday greetings. What also uh, can be used and what also works uh, is the backstages. So showing the office, showing your employees, showing the production cycle if you produce, for example, trackers. Um, it's the contest with the simple mechanics, like this one in the picture. I don't know if you can see it. But the, uh, the question was, what is this? And the one who said, what is this correctly, uh, got the present. So by the way, is anyone here can say, what is this? I don't know, neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, so also the feedbacks for the new products. Uh, so this is uh, the things that can be used in social media. And these are some key learnings that I've got, got from uh, our partners marketing and from our partners dealing with social media and from the common uh, researchers. 
So for the Facebook, uh, you can use the personal page because with the personal page you can uh, add friends. And with this you can for free, uh, ex um, you can for free enlarge your reach. At the same time, if you would like to use the corporate uh, account, the new mechanism of Facebook is that, that you all the time need to pay if you want your post to be high. But the good news is that uh, the amount of money you need to pay is rather low. Uh, the videos in Facebook get the biggest reach, and especially those videos that are um, downloaded directly to the Facebook. Uh, break free from the boring, so use the professional humor, because you are selling to a person, not to a company. What about LinkedIn? Uh, and Facebook too, by the way, not be too sales-centric. So, like half of the information can be dedicated to a brand, like one fourth should be dedicated probably about the sector you operate in, and uh, the last one fourth to the situation connected issues. So, in LinkedIn, please deploy the keywords. So, you can go to the specialties section, um, tag and use the keywords, add them to the LinkedIn company profile, so you will definitely uh, appear at search because search is perfect at LinkedIn. And also you can uh, use the search from the other point of view, so go hunting. With this I mean uh, use the LinkedIn powerful search facilities to find your ideal clients, to find your future leads, uh, to know what, is, um, what, what information are they sharing, what is important for them, so you can study your audience better. Uh, by the way, a few words about the content. The content, uh, it's usually the information people can um, change their contact information on, so it's the bridge between brand and customer. Uh, the majority of researchers um, were studying the question, what kind of businesses should, you should use content marketing? Uh, if we uh, grab everything all together, you we can see that. It's the complicated technological products, it's the new product entering the market, uh, it's the situation when the product solves a variety of problems, it's a product uh, with that can have several segments of the auditorium, and it's B2B. So basically, it's our situation. It's always our situation. So the idea behind is that, please, you can also use content marketing. The topics can be different too. Um, for example, you can easily write about how does it work. So, uh, if you remember, I've shown you the picture with the Russian language, so it was the picture about how does monitoring work. Why not to make an article about this? Uh, or, for example, you can share the complicated um, and completed client's tasks, so so-called cases that I already told you about. Use the news breaks or show the backstage of your company's work. So you already know all of this, you already spent time on this, so now you just need to spend a little bit more time of making an article out of this. So, wrapping everything up, the takeaways from the presentation. The website. Please start with the audit. You can use the presentation or you can write to marketing department and we will, and we will help you to understand where are you basically standing with your website. Then use the analytics to understand the clearer and the bigger picture. Think about the structure and the content to show that you are an expert. Think about credibility elements because they are really easy and they give much to your website. Emails. Try to do the segmentation. So try to divide your base into uh, homogeneous segments. Um, and also please work with every structural elements of your email. And the social media, register now <laughs> and share the content that will work. And please remember that you are not alone that you'll have Gurten Marketing Department, and we are really eager to help you with CR audits and consultations with email marketing templates, the ready-made or custom-made materials, booth designs if you take part in the exhibitions, and of course, we can do a speech on your event if you would like to have one. So basically, that's it. You can write to marketing at gurten.com or um, take part in the quest that is going on uh, today and on Friday, so we are situated on the ninth floor, marketing room, and you are always welcome. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> yeah, if you have any yeah, questions, it's the high time for them. Yeah, Mr. Samir has a question. Please lead the microphone to him. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, do you have uh, Gurta Marketing? Do you have a study that shows for us? as a, all clients, it's business to business. 
and do you have any uh, study that shows, shall we go more into social media or Google Ads for mm -hmm. marketing our services? As you started your uh, presentation, we sell service, not a product. Mm -hmm, exactly. Do you have such information that can help us to direct or channel our effort or investment? Basically, we've done the research. And we've asked the partners from different regions what kind of marketing channels do they usually use and what kind of marketing channels proved uh, to be the most effective one. So you can use the uh, uh, experience from other partners from your region that said that these and these and these um, very channels are the most efficient one and try for yourself. So basically, I can share this study with you it will be easier than to now to try to explain this. And of course, if you have questions on Google Ads, uh, Ivan is here, he's the professional in this sphere, so you can have a short talk on this too. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, okay, you can still visit Gurtum uh, Marketing Department exactly. throughout the day and on Friday, and the whole marketing department will be there in Beijing Hotel throughout the four days or two days of the conference. So thank you very much. And thank you.